completely transcendental uh, floor equation. Now that's just kind of a big word for um, a transcendental number can't be the solution to any polynomial with rational coefficients. That's not a whole lot of help right here, but there, numbers like e and pi uh, are, are transcendental numbers. But anyway, let's get to the business of solving this uh, floor equation. It's the floor of uh, e raised to the x power equal to the floor of the natural log of x squared. Now, a big, a big deal right here is that uh, ln x squared is an even function. That means that uh, it can take on values, negative values, okay? values to the left. Uh, you know, just negative numbers are, are, are input to this function. That normally you couldn't input a negative number into the logarithm function, but since it's squared, it's an allowable result. Now, uh, there's a there's two or three lemmas where really all the work was done in this problem. So this very first lemma states that the the floor of ln of x squared is equal to k. Now this is for um, positive integers or, or natural numbers. Now you can just almost see this has to be true. This is definitely an increasing function for positive numbers, right? X squared is an increasing function for positive values. And so if you substitute k equals two in here by laws of exponents and the fact that ln and e are inverses, you get k. Now notice we have to leave out k plus one. That's what the parentheses is doing here. We have to actually leave out e to the k plus one. Uh, because that would change this floor to k plus 1 by, again, laws of exponents in the fact that ln and e are inverse uh, functions. Now, in a similar fashion, you have to reverse things here because to the left of 0, to the left of 0, ln of x squared would be decreasing on, on for all negative numbers, much like x squared. All right, so that explains the, these two limits, which come in very handy. And then e to the x is even more straightforward. It's always increasing. So again, if you just use the inverse function property, if you take x equal to ln x and substitute it right here, you get e to the ln k, uh, which is just k. Okay, so now, so let's go ahead and try to dive into the solution here. Um, <clears throat> the floor of e to the x is equal to zero for all negative numbers. And if you just think about what the graph looks like, uh, like, for example, if you if you did e to the minus five, that's an extremely small number, like one over e to the fifth. OK, so uh, the floor of this graph, e to the x, is always equal to zero. And again, the, these are known graphs, e to the x, 10 to the x. They have uh, they have a known shape, you know, y intercept of zero, one. And this part right here is just the definition of what it means to have a, a, a floor of zero. Each each uh, image e to the x is strictly greater than zero, but it's strictly less than one. So that's literally the definition of the floor uh, there. Now, so uh, using now, so we, we've taken care of business. Uh, e, the floor of e to the x is equal to zero for all negative numbers. Now, if we use the lemma, we use the second part of the lemma right here. Okay, we actually get that the floor of ln of x squared is equal to zero on this interval. All right, now notice that minus e to the one half is just the same as the square root of e. Okay, so we, we know for a fact that this is gonna be part of our solution set. Now we haven't proved that's the only part of the solution set, okay? I, I hope you guys are seeing how these lemmas are so, so powerful. Otherwise you'd just be doing this by hand all the way through. But notice how we started at zero, all right? We didn't include uh, any negative numbers uh, because the natural log function is positive. Uh, we're saying right here that e to the x is equal to zero, the floor of e to the x is equal to zero as long as you're dealing with negative numbers. So uh, we know that ln x couldn't be part of this, if that makes any sense, because ln, ln x on the, on the positive side is gonna be an increasing function and, and so, but now let's, let's take a look at this second piece here. All right, now we, we try one positive value, okay? We try one positive value right here, and we get, uh, this is, this kind of proves what I was trying to say a moment ago, all right? Uh, we get that e, the floor of e to the x is one on this interval if you appeal to that lemma. And I won't shoot back to that screen, but it, this is just using that lemma. And so um, ln of one is zero. 
Now, um, <clears throat> also um, for for uh, right here, you for ln of x squared, you get these values right here for your intervals. Now, notice that that these two sets that are produced by the two lemmas don't have any overlap. Okay, don't have any overlap. Now, this is for the floor level of one, folks. And I apologize if, if you go back and look at it yourself, it's not as hard as I'm making it sound. But for these floor levels of one, we get these two solution intervals for both the left hand side and the right hand side of the equation. But notice they don't overlap. And it's very, that's the natural log of two is a number less than one, right? Uh, e to the one half is a number greater than one. Okay. So there's no overlap in these two sets. And in a similar fashion, for the four levels of two, three, and four, the very same thing is going to happen. You're going to get values of natural logs, which is a very slow growing function compared to the E function, okay, to the exponential function. And so you're going to have null set intersections for all of these floor levels, two, three, and four, five, all the way out ad infinitum. So the overall uh, solution set is this guy right here. And you know, I know that was a lot of words, but if you just go back and look at yourself and look at the lemmas and believe those lemmas, you'll, this it actually is a fairly straightforward uh, problem. So um, again, I, what I did is just repeatedly use these lemmas, then reach the conclusions, uh, reach the conclusions that, um, that there would never be any overlapping intervals for the floor levels two, three, four, all the way out. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. I hope you enjoyed it. And please leave any comments and, and if, what I can do to improve things. I think this stuff is fascinating, you know, because um, e to the x outgrows ln x by quite a bit. You know, if this was just e to the x equals to ln x without the square, there would be no solution. E to the x is, you know, that's what I mean by exponential growth. But the fact that you squared x right here gave it a chance for there to be exactly one overlapping interval. And for the record, this number is around minus 1.6, something like that, I think, if I recall. Uh, try not to use calculators on this thing. You want to just prove it theoretically. But this is around minus 1.6, and this is minus 1, and that is the only time that uh, these two floor functions uh, have any common values. Okay, thanks for listening.